download my free Legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. It's four core exercises that you need to focus on in order to reach the highest level of mastery. And then I'm going to give you the three sub skills of Legato. Once you master these three little skills, then the overall skill of playing very fast runs using hammer-ons and pull-offs will be very easy. So go sign up right now and get immediate access for free. See you in the course. quick three-step process of how to develop insane levels of speed and it doesn't matter if it's hammer-ons and pull-offs, alternate picking or sweet picking, it works for every single technique you want to practice. If you use these three steps, there is absolutely no way you will not reach the outer limit of what your body can do when it comes to accuracy and speed. Guaranteed. And it's easy. It's not a big thing. Okay, so what's the first thing? Well, you, you, instead of practicing a whole solo that you have transcribed in front of you, or you practice like six strings of three notes, like... Instead of doing things like that, you never want to use that when you practice technique, unless that's what you're practicing, unless that's what you want to learn, but not for the technique practicing here. Uh, you can always use your technique to then play stuff like that, but when you practice technique, you do it in an isolated little place on the neck and you create a loopable exercise if you if you don't have it already so for instance um, a little loopable exercise for a beginner working on alternate picking could be just three notes on one string you know an alternate picking f exercise for a intermediate player could perhaps be you know two sets of three notes on two strings you got a little string shift in there and if you're an advanced player, you could probably do a, a position shift as well. But it's important that it's loopable, that it stays in the same place on the, on the neck, and then because in the end here, we want to be able to play it without looking, and even without thinking about it. So, a little loopable thing here. That's the first step. Don't forget. What you then do with that little loopable exercise is that you pull out your metronome, and you can find several free ones on the internet if you don't have one. Pull out your metronome, and then you start practicing uh, the, the little uh, loopable exercise. If you have tabs, you read your way through the tabs just until you read, read, read until you have it. And you want to get to the point where you have the exercise in your mind. You cannot forget it. You can go on a train. You can practice it there. And you then you pull out the metronome and you go... And the most important thing about this phase here, or, or this step here, is that you work on your timing in the first phase. You work on your timing. If it's hammer-ons and pull-offs... Because it's easy to go, right, or out of time. But, but what we're really after here, in order to play it fast, we need that timing. And if it's uh, alternate picking, you want to get your accents right. Da, da, da. Accent. Accent, right? If it's sweet picking, you want to get the timing right as well, and your accent. Right? So that is essential. And that's what you do in the first phase. You come up with a circular exercise, a loopable exercise, and then you practice it with the metronome until you can effortlessly play it with the accents, if it's alternate picking, or with the timing right for any other technique, right? So really get the timing right. But you don't push for speed at all. You only think about being able to play it accurately, a thousand percent accurately. I know it's only a hundred percent accuracy. A hundred percent accurate, right? And with no speed. So the, the end product of phase one is to be able to play the little loopable exercise, but you have focus on it, but you can play it perfectly with no, you know, no speed yet. Phase two is that you take that product, that little loopable exercise, and you bring it to the point where you can play it without looking and without focusing on it, but um, with all, everything right, all the details of the technique, all the accents, whatever it is that you're working on, right? And so how do you get there? Well, you work with the metronome. And 
what you want to do is you want to turn something very conscious into something very unconscious. So you want to have that pattern, that little loopable exercise. And that's why we're doing this. That's why we're limiting it to a little bit of exercise. That's one of the reasons here. Because we want to get, get it to the point where we don't think about it. And you simply do it by just keeping on practicing with the metronome, staying at a comfortable tempo. You might want to push the tempo up a little bit just to make sure that you get better, right? But then you take it back again and say, okay, let me just go back. Yeah, I have it now. Now I can talk. And I can still get the accents right. And what has happened right now? What happened to this little exercise? Well, it moved from being conscious to being unconscious. And suddenly, I created a little tool there that I can now use to build speed. So we have two faces just to get to the point where we can build speed. But these two faces are very quick. If you're an advanced player, it might take you five minutes to get through the first phase one where you design the little loopable exercise. You start practicing, you have it down, you can remember it. And then phase two, where you take it to the point where you don't have to think about it anymore, it might take you half an hour, 20 minutes. If you're a beginner, you might you know, work on one string, you might uh, do it for an entire week, maybe two weeks before you can even take it to phase two. But that's just how it is, being a beginner. You know, the next thing you then do, the next little loopable exercise you then come up with will be much faster. But this is not a huge amount of time. Second phase, as I said, will be uh, a, a little less, a little more, depending on where you are in your development. Now, what you've done is something amazing because now you can actually practice while doing other stuff. You're freed up now. So now you can develop that speed, which takes time, which takes millions of repetitions. But you can do that now without getting bored, without it being a hassle. So what you do is that you go to the couch, you sit down in the couch, take your guitar, put it in a position that resembles standing up, performing in front of people. So you, you slouch back in the couch and push it away from, so, so, so you, don't, you have it in a, in a near realistic uh, position. And then what you do is that you, without the metronome, because now you have an internal metronome, you simply play the lick, or the exercise, the circular exercise, but now you play it perfectly, you don't need the metronome anymore, and you can do it without looking and without thinking about it. So now my brain is just practicing. This is what we want, by right? uh, plug in the, in the head, and then we install that s uh, skill of being able to play fast. And that's what you do. You just watch it comes. The average adult in the Western world watches between three or, and five hours of TV each and every night. So what you do is you simply convert that time into practice time, and you follow some very simple rules in phase three. Point one, you do not make mistakes. And I wish I could just, you know, come out and, just, you know, tell people when they make mistakes that you need to stop making mistakes. Because just think about it. What are you doing? You're practicing. What are you practicing? Uh, making mistakes all the time. That's what you become good at. Anything you do a lot of times, you become good at. So if you're practicing, making a lot, having a lot of inaccuracies, making a lot of mistakes, trying to play fast all the time, then that's what you become good at, playing sloppily with a lot of mistakes. So you'd never, ever make mistakes. Mistakes just make you play slower. If you make a mistake, you play a little bit slower, okay? So what we do is we, we hit the couch or the sofa, we slouch back and we push our guitar down so we sit comfortably in the sofa and we start picking away. And in the beginning, you might need a little focus to get the whole exercise started, but then you start watching sitcoms, the news, whatever you usually watch. And um, people in the Western world watches somewhere between three and five hours of TV each and every day. So all you really need to do is to take your now unconscious, loopable exercise and then practice it every time you watch TV. So that gives you between three or five hours of practice each and every day. And if anyone does that, follows these three stages, no matter what it is that you want to become extremely good at, well, then you will reach the outer limit of what your body can physically do. There's absolutely no doubt about it. It's just a, it's just a matter of mechanics in your body, right? So those are the three stages. First, take a loopable exercise when you're working on a technique. Then practice it to the point where you can remember it effortlessly and you can get everything right. The accents, the timing, the whatever details of the technique. That's it. Step two, you then take that exercise and with the metronome, you bring it up to a point where you can play it unconsciously even. It's just a, now it's a pattern in the brain that you don't have to think about, but it's not fast yet. Okay, so now you're at that level. 
step. And it might take you one hour, a half hour, one week, depending on how far, how far you are in your development. Then the last phase, you sit in front of the TV. You don't think about, uh, you revisit this as you practice in front of the TV. You just look down and say, I'm, I'm still okay. Yeah, I'm doing it perfectly. Okay, let's watch the news again, right? And you just sit there for hours and hours and hours e each night. And anyone can do that if they watch TV every day. And so time goes by after after one month you'll be very you be mesh will be better than you was before after you know two months you'll be whoa after six months you'll be like okay this is totally possible i'm already there you'll be there in your mind because you can feel that this stuff works it just takes a little time but that doesn't matter when you're entertained as you practice right so everyone can do it if they're willing to do the TV practice. Those were the three steps. Now go do them. Watch the video again as you do the first step. So you get the, the three steps into your mind and then just go do them. Just come on, it's no talent. It, we're not talking talent here. We're not talking special abilities. Just go do the work and you'll have the skill, okay? So see you in another video.